questions generally and you can answer as you will. First from Antonio Francisco who says, how do the additives, food additives, affect the quality of compost? Sanima? Who would like to jump in on this? If you're talking about, for instance, additives, if you're talking about a container, that would be an impurity. So we can use that with the triage or with a filter. But if you're talking about microscopic particles, then obviously we'd have to work not with mechanical criteria, because, but criteria such as we heard this morning by the experts, bearing in mind the microbiological fraction, the microbiology can fix nutrients, but also the toxic substances and even radioactivity, and not release these into the environment. But in most composting industries managed by the multinationals, they work more to, to tick a box than thinking about the microbiological process and in the soil that's going to receive this compost. To give you an example, it's a, a banana plantation which might prefer fresher compost, i.e. less ripe, than a papaya plant that requires totally mature compost and without any phytotoxic substances. The process itself will depend on who does it, how you does it. If you want to earn a lot of money from the process, then they're not going to worry too much about the details and phytotoxic substances from the anaerobiosis and the lack of oxygen in the process might remain in the final product. And obviously the plants are going to be impacted that from, but from a legal point of view, where there's a, any kind of contamination, that's a legal, a different legal issue. I'm talking about the qualitative aspect. In the case of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, for instance, two months ago, the Island Council of Gran Canaria and the head of services with us here and part of her team, together with the trade unions, have conducted stu studies in water treatment plant sludge that contains heavy metals and the results are highly satisfactory, even excellent for vegetables and stuff. It all depends. I, if I give you a load of chickpeas and cabbages and, and if you want to cook chickpeas without any water, without salt, they'd be totally inedible. And composting is very a similar process. You have to, you need to put your heart in it. And that's why micro composters understand when Salvador, Salvador is a micro composter for me. They do master work. Javier too, he's a real maestro in this, in these processes. And they do them with, they put a lot of love in it. Companies make a major effort to copy this, but it's more difficult for them. An antibiotic can be traced in organic farming. The origins of the raw materials are limited. They're ring-fenced. If we have a whole range of organic substances on an island, e organic farming bans the use of the remains from slaughterhouses and any remains any um, industrial waste because this would entail a risk of of the spread of chemical substances or complex substances uh, industrially we also need to understand additives in compost and there are limits in the law in the JRC report, we have toxicity levels and many different aspects that have been studied. So, um, in composting, we uh, can't always see exactly what is contained. We might see it in the anaerobic digestion process. For example, if we have certain uh, toxic gases present in that have come from the landfill. There might be other different additives that uh, added to the 
um, inputs because we have inputs in bottle production, industrial production, and we see this in biogas. But if you look at compost, obviously there are limits laid down by legislation and the JRC are working in this direction and they are drawing up certain uh, limits that we can study for the future and apply. Let's move on to the next question then. It comes from Angel. She, the procedure for getting a mature compress can be accelerated by using worms. Who's worked with worms? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't accelerate the process. No. Well, that's a pretty firm answer. So let's move on to the next question. From the project Arbol, we, talk, we talked about the sea. Is it possible to compost seaweed from beach cleanups to get quality compost? Uh, yes. <clears throat> In fact, the Agricultural Research Centre, the ICIA here in Gran Canaria, worked alongside the ITC Technology Centre in Gran Canaria. In fact, they conducted a study over three years, a study of seaweed compost. This was repeated also in the north of Germany. Florian is in fact going to talk about this, but please allow me to finish my explanation of what's happening here in the Canary Islands. So all the seaweed that ends up on our beaches, there's a lot of seaweed there. Mm, but basically people said that people are stealing sand and using seaweed collection as an excuse. So therefore they conducted this study. And they saw that uh, to clean seaweed from salt water, we needed fresh water, which meant an added cost. And Thomas Alcoverro, conducted the study and in fact he published his findings there is a book and if this person who asked this question they can get in touch with me and I will send them the information on this book they can download it on the internet uh, another study on uh, 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 beachfront uh, uh, seaweed was also produced by a, 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 an academic from Gran Canaria and this uh, analyzed all beachfront seaweed in this area thank you Sorry, excuse me, Florian. Thank you, yes. I'm going to continue in Spanish. Uh, in Kefalonia, Catelios, and on Greek island. Uh, this is Compost Hellas. You can go to the internet, look to Compost Hellas. They're working since 20 years with Posidonia seaweed composting. Pure seaweed with approximately 10-20% of sheep manure and some other residues from dairy production, from cheese production. And they are very successful. Why? The seaweed has a high percentage, specifically where the, um, uh, the roots part is done, a very stable fiber. And even if you compost it over a whole year, more or less extensive composting scheme, you still have those fibers similar to a peat substrate. And this provides a very high physical stability and um, uh, as you can use it in a substrate. It's a, it's a perfect material. You have to know how to mix it and how to compost it properly, but they sell it in bags, very successful. I think it's the most expensive compost I've ever seen in Europe. <laughs> um, uh, there are only problems because of the economic crisis in 2008, 2009 to find customers. But um, it works perfectly and this is a resource that should be used together with the existing resources in order to balance the carbon nitrogen uh, there's another, relation. There's another issue uh, with the climate change. Uh, well, uh, in Spanish. Sí, okay, I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue Spanish. So with climate change, it's quite likely that there will be more and more seaweed over the coming years. And we're 
also seeing species coming up the sea from the south because of climate change. And this means that in the Canary Islands, we're going to be producing much more seaweed over the coming years. And also the sewage plants feed seaweed. Now, this is obviously organic material, but it ends up in the sea, although it shouldn't. So this is a key area too. No more the questions from Twitter for now. But so I'm quite interested in this mix of earth, land. Are there any marine products that we can use that uh, will help with composting? Products that we can extract from the sea and these could perhaps help us in the um, process of creating compost? I don't know. Um, are there any natural products? Uh, the ITC, I know, are working with microalgae. Does this help? No. Um, um, um. A marine product of fish will be used to decomposing anaerobically without oxygen. So it's totally contrary to compost naturally because they live in the sea. But you have sharks which are responsible for cleaning the sea. On land, if a plant is sick, we have the pests that will devour it. And the ITC has developed seaweed extracts to enrich compost. What they haven't studied sufficiently is whether from a microbiological point of view it makes any difference or not. But in any of it, from an enzymatic point of view, they're highly beneficial as additives. They're being used. Products that have been prepared in the Canary Islands are currently being used. Any further questions? We've got a delay that started this morning. It's not our fault, which has taken us up to 9 o'clock, which I think is time to wrap up this block. So I'd like to thank you all for being with you. I'd like to thank all of the speakers, and we'll see you tomorrow.